Sock Creek is a tributary of the west branch of the Susquehanna River located in central Pennsylvania. U.S. Traffic Route 220, the Susquehanna Beltway, crosses the floodplain of the Loyal Sock Creek near the borough of Montoursville. The design of the highway bypass around Montoursville was initiated in the late 1960s. The final location and alignment of the roadway included a 400-foot buffer zone of natural ground and vegetation between the highway embankment and the stream channel. As a result of major hurricane floods, Agnes in June 1972 and Eloise in September 1975, the creek migrated eastward and in the process of this meandering eroded the natural protection zone away until the creek channel was directly against the highway embankment. A consequence of this meandering was the exposure of a section of the highway embankment to high velocity flood flows ranging from 13 to 19 feet per second. Random rock fill was dumped along the embankment to form a temporary protection mechanism. The point bar located on the opposite bank was excavated to increase conveyance while studies were made to evaluate the severity of the threat to the highway and to investigate permanent protection measures. Loyal Sock Creek flows through materials deposited during repeated periods of glaciation. The stream channel has been cut through a layer of materials composed of large sandstone and siltstone cobbles mixed with fine silts and sands which are products of glaciofluvial weathering. Test hole borings and other commercial excavations have shown the entire area is composed of deeply bedded sands and gravels. Because of the absence of significant amounts of clay in the glacial deposits of the Loyal Sock Valley, the materials are non-cohesive. The fines are washed out by the natural stream flow resulting in an armoring of the channel bed. The average size of particles left behind to line the channel bed was found by mechanical sieve analysis to be approximately four inches in diameter. Erodibility of the channel bank materials results in meandering of the stream at high flows. Loyal Sock Creek is a steep energy gradient stream with a history of severe flooding. The complex flood flow patterns, movable stream bottom, and erodibility of soils at the site could not be readily analyzed by mathematical methods. Pennsylvania Department of Transportation Engineers had developed a protective scheme to stabilize the troublesome meander. Because of the unique design, the complex field conditions and the potentially disastrous consequences associated with a roadway breach, it was decided to subject the problem section of Loyal Sock Creek and the proposed stabilization measures to a hydraulic model study. Open channel hydraulic models are based on the Froude number. The Loyal Sock model was distorted in scale to obtain the best results for the available laboratory space. For a distorted model, both the vertical length ratio, L sub V, and the horizontal length ratio, L sub H, are factors that appear in the modeling or scale ratios. The horizontal scale was 1 to 90, while the vertical scale was 1 to 32. This distortion allowed better accuracy for measurements of depths and velocities in the model. The velocity ratio is defined by the equation model velocity divided by stream velocity equals the square root of the vertical scale ratio. A velocity of two feet per second measured in the model represents a stream velocity of 11.3 feet per second in the prototype. The ratio of flow rates is defined through the scale ratios by this equation. The ratio of model flow to prototype flow is equal to the horizontal scale ratio multiplied by the vertical scale ratio to the 3 halves power. 
For the Loyal Sock Creek model, the flow ratio can be calculated to be 16,292. This means that to model a flood flow of 86,000 cubic feet per second, which is the 1972 flood of record, the model must carry a flow of 5.3 cubic feet per second. The Loyal Sock Creek model was built in the Civil Engineering Hydraulics Laboratory at the Pennsylvania State University. Extensive survey data were used to develop a large topographic map of the study area. The topographic information was transferred to plywood templates spaced six inches apart in the model, representing 45-foot spacing in the field. The templates were carefully set to the proper elevation. Then, moist sand was packed between the templates. A painted concrete cap covered the entire model. Limestone aggregate was placed on top of the concrete cap in those areas where movable bed studies were to be conducted. To model channel roughness, wooden pegs were set into the concrete cap. Trees and brush which lined the stream channel were modeled by wire screening folded to simulate flow resistance. Confidence in model predictions is increased by calibration of the model to reproduce an observed event. High water marks and discharges were available for two flood events at the study site. Calibration of the Loyal Sauk Creek physical model for other flows required a computer model for water surface profile computations. The calibration procedure involved three steps. First, the computer model was calibrated by adjusting roughness parameters until two known high water marks were matched. Second, the calibrated computer model was used to obtain a water surface profile for the flow rate to be studied in the physical model. Third, the wooden pegs lining the physical model were adjusted until the computed water surface profile was matched in the model. Since the model reproduced an observed flood event during testing, calibration was considered satisfactory. The first series of tests was made for a fixed bed model configuration. That is, no motion of any model feature was permitted. Measurements of depths and velocities throughout the flow field were used to assess the potential for further bank erosion and point bar deposition, the two prominent features of alluvial channel meandering. Excavation of the gravel point bar formed opposite the highway embankment was completed prior to the model study. An important concern of the model study was whether this excavation alone would substantially stabilize the meander and effectively prevent erosion of the temporary protective measures. The fixed bed model was tested both with the point bar excavated to planned cross sections and with the point bar developed to its maximum extent prior to the excavation. Qualitative verification of the predictions of point bar deposition was obtained from a partially movable bed study. A sediment load of fine sand was introduced at the head box of the fixed bed model with the point bar excavated. The flood of record was then run through the model while a continuous supply of sand was made available. During passage of the modeled flood, a sand point bar was deposited along the west side of the channel bend. This deposition was consistently reproducible. The gravel point bar was essentially re-established to pre-excavation limits in both depth and extent. Thus, deposition of the point bar following any major flood event was confirmed by both the fixed bed and the movable bed tests. The implication of this redeposition is a probable reoccurrence of embankment erosion. Continued erosion of the channel bank upstream from the highway embankment was obtained by replacing the gravel bar as a fixed bed feature and modeling the floodplain with sand. Bank full discharge was run through the model until an equilibrium was reached. The extent of channel movement was estimated to be about 300 feet eastward if the existing rock protection was not allowed to erode. The movable bed test clearly confirmed that continued erosion of the channel toward the highway would occur. The final test of movable bed features included a mixture of sand and gravel for the floodplain to account for the erodibility of the rock protection already in place along the highway.
The purpose of this particular test was not to predict the actual extent of erosion, but rather to determine the most susceptible points. A flow corresponding to bankful discharge was run through the model. Initially, the point of attack was the tip of the lead deflector. But as the lead deflector was eroded, the point of attack shifted to the downstream deflector. Finally, with failure of the downstream deflector, the point of attack shifted upstream as the meander growth continued. Material eroded from the deflectors was deposited along the gravel point bar, tending to block the mainstream channel and force the flow toward the east bank behind an island at the downstream end of the study area. Erosion was therefore concentrated along the east bank, downstream from the present location of rock protection. This test confirmed the conclusion that the existing rock protection would be lost during major flood events. Conclusions from these two sets of measurements made for prototype flows of 39,000 cubic feet per second and 86,000 cubic feet per second were that the point bar would be re-established. The east channel bank would be subject to further scour and eastward meandering and that the rock protection already in place would be subject to high probability of failure during flood flows. The next step in the model study was to evaluate bank protection methods to control the meander and thereby to protect the highway embankment. A trial system of dikes or groins was installed along the east bank of the fixed bed model. The conveyance or capacity to carry flow between the excavated inside bank and the trial groin scheme approximated the actual conveyance of the natural channel prior to the point bar removal. Confetti was used to visualize flow patterns created by the dikes. The orientation, spacing, and length of the dikes were adjusted until visually smooth flow pattern was observed. Individual dikes were then removed to determine the necessity of each. The final groin scheme derived from the model consisted of four structures projecting from the east bank at increasing angles to flow velocity. This design was built into the model as a three-dimensional fixed bed feature. The slopes of the model groins were two to one based on design criteria for stability. The elevation of the top of the groins was set at the energy grade line for the design flood to minimize scour due to overtopping. The shape of the upstream dike was found by trial and error to create the most satisfactory flow conditions at the start of the dike field. A unique aspect of the design was that flow had to be conveyed on both sides of the deflector, thus the upstream groin had to function as flow splitter as well as deflector. Results of these fixed bed tests of the dike system indicated that the main velocity of flow had been shifted westward toward the inside of the channel bend and had prevented substantial deposition of the point bar. Also, low velocity eddies were created behind the dikes. These eddies would effectively protect the natural bank from scour and promote deposition behind the dikes. A qualitative analysis of the effectiveness of the groin system was made by introducing a sediment load of sand and running a flood of record through the model. The point bar deposited with the groins in place was much smaller in extent and in depth than the one which was deposited without the groin system. The predictions made from velocity and depth measurements were confirmed qualitatively by the movable bed simulation of sediment transport. The proposed groin scheme would significantly reduce deposition of the point bar and will maintain the channel conveyance while protecting the highway embankment from further erosion at flood flows. Results from the model study determined there were three alternatives to prevent the Loyal Sock Creek meander from encroaching on the Route 220 roadway embankment. These alternatives and their estimated costs over a 60-year design period are 1. Periodic excavation of the gravel bar to maintain an open channel and replacement of existing rock protection eroded by floods, $1,350,000. 2. Realignment of the existing lead deflector, improvement of the integrity of the existing rock protection, and periodic excavation of the gravel bar to maintain an open channel, $770,000. Three, implementation of the groin scheme developed by the model study to stabilize the upstream bank and create a self-cleansing channel, $300,000.
$370,000. This study clearly demonstrates that although hydraulic modeling requires considerable expenditures of time and money, it is a valuable engineering tool in determining a permanent and cost-effective solution to channel instability problems.